Hey, what's going on everyone? Appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Fallout 76 video. In this one, I'm going to be going over the new Legendary Perk cards that were just recently introduced to us. You can actually check them out live at the moment in the PTS. But I'm just going to be reading off the information that Bethesda has provided us with and I'm going to be going over what players think also about these Legendary Perk cards. As well as my thoughts too. Which, by the way, speaking of my thoughts, before I get into all of this, I guess I'm going to go ahead and give a real quick plug here. If you aren't following my other social media, such as my Twitter and Instagram, as well as my Twitch, feel free to go follow them. I always have links provided to them down below in the description. I'm highly, highly active on my Twitter, and I consistently live stream over on my Twitch. I'm kind of active on my Instagram. I think the last time I posted actually on there was about a week or two ago. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this now. So, starting off with the Legendary Perk cards. I actually haven't read all of these myself. I just took a quick glimpse at the first few. So, as you can see, pulled up right here on the screen. We got Blood Sacrifice, Botany Buddy, Brawling Chemist, Collateral Damage, Detonation Contagion, and Electric Absorption. And if you notice, these Legendary Perk cards can be leveled up to rank 4 for each of them. So, of course, when you get them to rank 4, they're going to be even stronger than what you're seeing here for this demonstration. So, starting off here with the Blood Sacrifice. It states here, when you die, teammates gain plus 25 damage resistance and heal 40 hit points over 8 seconds. Um, not that bad, but that's requiring you to die. I guess, potentially, using this perk card could be strategic if you think about it if you're running with a squad you just run in there sacrifice yourself and then your squad stacked with damage resistance i'm pretty sure the damage resistance can get pretty high too when you have this blood sacrifice perk card maxed out anyways next up here which well, i don't even know why i didn't mention this in the first place the art to these legendary perk cards are phenomenal i don't know who did this but they're awesome looking but yeah okay so for the Botany Buddy one, it says you have a 10% chance harvesting Flora, which grants 2 hit points a second, and plus 25 damage resistance to the team. I, it potentially could be good if you have Flora around to harvest, I guess. Just because of that damage resistance, you know, that's always beneficial. Next up here we have Brawling Chemist. Generate 1 combat enhancing chem every hour up to a max of three. Now that isn't really handy to me because I can just craft plenty of chems easily. It could be handy to someone that doesn't have high supplies though. Anyways, next up here we got collateral damage. Enemies killed with a melee weapon have a 10% chance to explode. <laughs> what? Oh gosh, couldn't you potentially kill yourself if the enemy explodes? This seems like a suicidal perk card, because once you take out the enemy, it's going to explode in your face. I don't know if that's going to be too much fun. My honest first impressions about this legendary perk card seems like it's pretty useless. At the moment, to me anyways. Because once again, you could just take yourself out. But, uh, so, next up here, we got Detonation Contagion. It says, enemies killed with a thrown explosive have a 20% chance to explode. Hmm. Okay. I, I, once again, I don't really see the benefit out of this. Don't the enemies already pretty much explode when you throw an explosive at them? Anyways, next up here, we got Electric Absorption. 10% chance enemy energy attacks recharge your Power Armor's Fusion Core. Hmm. Now this could actually be beneficial, especially in PvP, if you have a solid Power Armor tank build. Because there are a lot of players out there that use Teslas in PvP. And, not to mention, energy weapons in general. So this could be beneficial. I guess we'd have to playtest that. But yeah, overall, there seems to be three solid Legendary Perk cards out of this list. And three ones, to me, that seemed pretty pointless. Let's go ahead and check out the next ones. So... First off here, we got Exploding, so starting off first off here, we got Exploding Palm, which, wow, once again, the art to these Legendary Perk cards look awesome. I mean, what do you guys think? What's your honest opinion about these? I am really digging the art to these Perk cards. They look really well done. So anyways, next up here, we got Exploding Palm. 
It says, while unarmed, you have a 5% chance of triggering an explosion on attack hits. Wow. Triggering an explosion. So you don't have to technically take out the enemy. So pretty much what this is signifying to me is you could potentially combine Demolition Expert and do a bit more damage while being unarmed. Hmm. I know a lot of unarmed builds are definitely going to appreciate that perk card. I mean, that's what I'm getting out of it. Next up here, we got Far Flung Fireworks. Enemies killed with a ranged weapon have a 10% chance to explode. Okay. Once again, that's seeming pretty pointless to me because there's already, like, uh, perk cards out there that make enemies explode, such as Bloody Mess. Then again, I think it's talking about, like, a demolition explosion. So... I, I don't know. Still, once again, it seems pretty pointless to me because you have to take out an enemy, and once you take it out, it explodes. So what? You know? I mean, I guess it could be kind of handy for hordes that you take on. I don't think it's worth it to invest into that bird card. Personally, at the moment, anyways. To me. <laughs> so next up here, we got follow through. It states here, range sneak damage increases damage to target by 10% for 30 seconds. Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I like this one. I like this perk card right here. Like, I rely on Sneak. That's what my build is about. I rock a Sneak Fats build, so I can definitely see me investing into this legendary perk card here. Follow through. Seems like a really solid one to be investing in. For me, anyways, because once again, I rock a Sneak build. But anyways, next up here, we got Heavy Duty. Take 15% less range damage when wearing full heavy armor. That could be potentially pretty good, um, especially in PvP, because a lot about PvP is trying to take less damage from your opponent so you don't die as easy. Um, next up here we got Power Armor Reboot. 15% chance to auto-revive with full health if you die in Power Armor. What? Okay, that's pretty neat too. Wow. They are really um, up in the ante for power armor users, it seems like. Anyways, next up here we got Retribution. 20% chance to heal and deal better damage for 15 seconds after blocking. Hmm. I don't really utilize blocking too much in the game, but for players that do, this could be potentially one that you could invest some points in. Once again, all these can be invested with 4 points, so they can get stronger over time. What you're seeing here... It's just a sample of how powerful they can be. Over time, over time, when you invest more points into them, obviously, they'll become way more powerful than what you're just seeing here, for examples. So, yeah, let's go ahead and head on over to the next page. And once again, the art is looking awesome. So, we got Power Armor Reboot, which we just read. Uh, Retribution, we just read. Suited Up. Take 15% less range damage when wearing full sturdy armor. So it seems like Bethesda is adding in perk cards so we'll be able to take less damage. Which, you know, we need that. Not only in PvE, but in PvP as well. Anyways, next up here, we have taking one for the team. Enemies take 10% more damage when they attack you if you are on a team. Wow. That is a really good perk card. And seeing how you can rank this up, once again, three more times, you can be dealing out a lot more damage than just 10%. I'm definitely thinking about investing into this perk card because I'm always riding in a squad. Sadly, though, I don't see any, like, Lone Wanderer perk cards, which that sucks for players that like to play solo. But, yeah, this is one that I'll definitely be investing in because I'm always running with a squad. But, anyways, next up here we got Thin Skinned. Take 15% less range damage when wearing full light armor. I like the art to that. A protect charm with some wood armor on. But yeah, once again, Bethesda's adding in a perk card, so we'll be able to take less damage when wearing specific armor. Which can add up. As you can see, it starts out at 15%. That'll definitely add up when you max it out. So anyways, lastly up here, we got What Rads. It gives you plus 50 radiation resistance just by having it with one star, and you restore one radiation per second. Sheesh! That seems like a really powerful perk card if you hate radiation. <laughs> like, you could be running around in a nuke zone perfectly fine without rocking a Chinese stealth suit, a hazmat suit, or power armor. You could be running around in a nuke zone perfectly fine. 
So yeah, there you have it. There is a quick example over some of the legendary perk cards that they've introduced to us so far. I don't know if this is all of them. I'm pretty sure it's not because I didn't see any solo dolo legendary perk cards. And Bethesda knows that there are players out there that enjoy playing solo. I mean, heck, Pete Hines himself even stated in the past that he just enjoys running around the game solo. So I could definitely see them adding in legendary perk cards for solo players. I mean, we got the Lone Wanderer perk card, right? So they are aware. Although this is an online Fallout game, it is expected that we are having the multiplayer experience in Fallout. After all, this is the first multiplayer Fallout. But uh, yeah, so that's, once again, a quick example over the legendary perk card system. Now, let's go ahead and get into a little bit more over what Bethesda shared. It says, welcome to the public test server for our upcoming patch 20 for Fallout 76. In this patch, we are adding the powerful new legendary perks for high-level characters, a system for finding teammates in-game more quickly and effectively, and a colossal problem, a difficult new eight-player public event featuring the Wendigo Colossus. We would greatly appreciate any... Okay, that's just talking about the private test server. So here, it goes over the legendary perks system. Legendary perks are new, high-level perk cards that will help you add even more power and build diversity to your characters. You can access them via the special menu, and we love your feedback on the layout, UI, and ease of use as you try out the system. You will be able to unlock your first legendary perk slot at level 50, and new ones at certain level milestones after that. So it goes 50, 75, 100, 150, 200, and 300. Okay, so that makes sense. Anyways, Bethesda goes on and says, Your characters who are already high level will immediately have access to one legendary perk slot for each of the above leveling milestones they've reached. For example, a level 250 character will have access to five legendary perk slots with the ability to open a sixth slot at level 300. And it states here that there are 16 legendary perks in total, offering plenty of variety when further boosting your character's ability. Okay, wow. So those legendary perks that I did just show off to you all are it. That's all we got at the moment. But keep in mind, Bethesda may be planning to add in more over time. But so far, these are all the legendary perks that we got. There's 16 here. So there's six on this page, another six on this page, and then we can't count the two in the beginning here. But, you know, there's four new ones on this page. Total of 16. It's crazy. I did not expect that. I thought there would be more, honestly. But it is what it is. I mean, there are a lot of creative ones in there. Like I was mentioning, there were some that I was pretty interested in. They're also adding create and join public teams, which is going to be really handy for players to meet other players and to also make it so they don't have to play solo. As you can see here, public teams bring a new way to quickly find and form a team with your friends or other players with a shared activity in mind. There are six types of public teams to choose from, each featuring a special bonus for the members of that team. Over a short period of time in a public team, you will form bonds with your teammates and your bonus will multiply for each bonded teammate. Start new public teams via the social menu, join a team via in-game notifications, or look for team leaders on the map and join from there. Let us know what you think about the system, and most importantly, whether or not this make it more likely for you to group up with other players. And lastly, the new public event, a colossal problem. It states here, this encounter is tuned for the hardiest of wasteland adventurers. And even then, it will test your abilities. This event is set up for teams of eight, so prepare for a hard fought battle and be sure to try out the public teams feature via the instructions above when forming your squad. The instructions I just went over. Uh, in order to start the event, you must drop a nuke on Mananga Mine. Oh, cool. Nice! They actually added something where you have to drop a nuke to trigger an event. What? I did not expect that. Oh, that's awesome. Finally, some more in-game content that involves nuking in Fallout 76. Anyways, it says here, we are working on a way to drop nukes on the schedule in a future update for the PTS. Once we implement this, the scheduled drops should allow time to plan your attack since you'll know when to expect them. Be sure to stop by Foundation and begin the quest something sentimental to learn about the history of Earl Williams and the history of the mine. Man, lots of good stuff coming in the future. Lots of good stuff. Super stoked about that new colossal problem event, especially now. I mean, I knew it was going to be a new boss fight, but I didn't know it was going to be involving having to nuke it. Finally, we're not only going to have to nuke the Fisher Prime and White Springs and Harper's Ferry. There's going to be more variety out there. Or 
Going to be targeting Mananga Mine now. Finally. But, yeah, now let's go ahead and get into um, what the community is saying about this. So right here is a comment on this Reddit post which shares the Patch 20 info, which, by the way, I'll have a link down below to this Reddit post if you want to further investigate this for yourself. But this guy says here, a lot of the combat perks aren't very unique. I love the armor-related ones, but the ones about killing enemies with a specific condition seem pretty bogus. Additionally, there appears to be a severe lack of Lone Wonder-related ones. I adore the art though. I completely agree right there. I was thinking that myself. Like they were showing things that involved squads. So why not something that involved solo players because there's plenty out there. Then again it could be because they're trying to promote more team play in the game. As we know they just introduced this new system where players will be able to join up with one another easier. So maybe that's why. Maybe they want players to engage with one another more and create teams. And over time, that could create new friendships, too. I know it has personally for me. It's one of the reasons that kept me engaged with this game. I liked getting on and talking to my buddies on Fallout 76. But anyways, this guy states here, The good perk cards to him are Brawling Chemist, free combat chems every hour. It's weird, but seems decent. Personally to me, that didn't really seem that great because I have plenty of supplies to create chems, but it could be beneficial for players that don't have much supplies, like I was saying before. Anyways, next up here, Electric Absorption. Seems good. My only nitpick worry is that it uses specifically energy damage and a percent chance. Next up, Exploding Palm. Seems like a good perk for unarmed users. Explosive has been out of their realm until now. Yeah, definitely. Next up, the Follow Through Perk Card. It makes an existing mechanic better and makes more playstyles viable. Only worry is the potential for using it to destroy boss enemies too fast. Next up is Heavy Duty which, you know, created more damage resistance. Power Armor Reboot, which made it so you had a potential chance to revive on full health when you go down. Uh, next up here for the good perk card is Retribution. It rewards melee builds. Pretty crap for ranged users, obviously. Anyways, the next perk cards he thinks are good are Suited Up, Thin Skinned, and What Rats. Now, the bad perks, in his opinion, is Blood Sacrifice, Botany Buddy, Collateral Damage, Detonation Contagion, Far Flung Fireworks, and Taking One for the Team. Now, personally, I had a different opinion than this guy with the bad perks. I think Blood Sacrifice could be good if you just use it strategically. Um, same with the Botany Buddy. I guess it all depends on where you're fighting at, but there is flora everywhere around the game pretty much. So you'll always be getting higher damage resistance if you just stay consistent with picking flora. It's not a super horrible perk, seeming once again how much flora is around in the game. Um, also, lastly, he said taking one for the team is bad. And I completely disagree with that. He said it's okay, but generally it feels too situational to him. Let's see what other opinions we got in here. This guy says, these perks look pretty boring. 16 cards that most of them are just copy and paste of the same effect, but for melee and ranged. Was hoping for more variety for specific builds or weapon types. This person said, very, very disappointed about the perks. I was expecting to see fun and unique perks, not flat percentage increases. Um, this person said, wow, seems like a missed opportunity to introduce passive skills like what people have been wanting for some time. This person said, agreed, three of the perks are the exact same thing except for armor weights, light, heavy, sturdy, which feels like a waste. There are a couple of good ones that I'll be taking, but for the most part, they aren't going to change anyone's play style. Sheesh, the community's pretty disappointed in this by just reading these comments. As a sniper build, using an instigating gauss rifle, there's one perk card that I absolutely need. One I kind of wanted, and the rest are mostly useless. Yeah, the perks are kind of underwhelming overall. There's one or two I'll use as a heavy weapons power armor build, but for the most part, they aren't great. Wow. Legendary perks would be reduced hunger and thirst rate by 50% due to... X amount of percentage, more damage of attacking from behind or stuff would play with current builds like nocturnal weapons now deal cold damage at night and fire damage during day but break faster, vampire weapons make enemies bleed, instead we get heal people when picking flowers, hey it gave them damage resistance too when picking flowers, come on now, an explosion that will probably shoot mobs away making easier for to not find the body and loot of certain enemies and also Padding perks. All the armor and explosive damage ones could be put into one legendary. It really shows that the devs don't play this game, to be honest. And someone below them said agreed. 
Jeez. Seems like the community is really not liking this. I mean, I can agree, though. They did seem a bit underwhelming. A lot of them did. Honestly, as you heard me talking in the beginning over my first impressions, I thought there were going to be more perk cards than what was shown, but no. These 16 are it for now. For now. Bethesda may implement more in the future. Especially if they hear our feedback and what we would like to see as legendary perk cards in the game. Let me go ahead and actually go over the ones that I liked out of the 16. I think there was like 7 of them that I actually liked. So I liked the Blood Sacrifice, the Botany Buddy, and the Electric Absorption. So, 3 here. Next page. I like the Exploding Palm, the Follow Through, and that was about it on this one. So 2 here. And uh, these, I like the Thin Skinned, since I'm a sneak build, I like wearing light armor. Uh, taking one for the team, and that was about it. So, two, two, three. So, yeah, I like seven of the legendary perk cards out of the 16 that were provided for us. Uh, so, yeah, I like less than half of them. But it is what it is. This is what we got at the moment, guys. At least Bethesda took the time to add legendary perk cards in the game. And not to mention a team-up system, too, as well as a new in-game boss fight that we're going to be able to take on. These legendary perk cards give our levels a bit more meaning, too, which is nice. You know, it kind of gives us more of an achievement over leveling up so high. But, yeah, I guess that's about wrapping up this video, everyone. Just wanted to go over this news and as well as what the community is thinking about these legendary perk cards. It seems like, as you saw, a lot of players are disappointed. I didn't read all the negative feedback, let's just say that much. That was only a few. There is literally over 300 comments on that post. But, yeah, thanks everyone for taking the time watching and listening. And if you made it this far, once again, consider going to follow my Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. All links are provided to them down below in the description. That would be greatly appreciated, everyone. But, yeah, I'm out of here, everyone. Until next time, remember to try to stay safe out there, especially during these times that we're in currently. Peace.